studying the knowledge of London. This involves learning uh, a basic 320 runs to start with. This gives an overall knowledge of London and the main routes from north, east, west, south. This, um, this is then combined with learning a minimum of 3,000 points of interest. Points of interest can be anything really that a customer might ask to be taken to. Hotels, stations, pubs, nightclubs, uh, anything really. 3,000 is only the start of what you need to learn. By the time completed knowledge, probably have learned in a region of 10,000 points of interest. Realistically, if someone was starting the knowledge, first thing they'd do is probably purchase a scooter. This is because they have to navigate round London to learn the basic 320 routes first of all. Um, you then add more and more routes to this, continuously going out um, and basically learning more and more routes and memorising um, the map of London basically. But this process takes anything between probably a year to two years. Uh, before you're ready for the appearance stage, um, what you do is you test yourself and the best way to do this is by having what we call a call over partner. Uh, this is normally someone else studying and preferably on the same level stage as you are. But leave on the right Park Road, forward the Broadway, forward Crouch End Hill, left Hornsey Rise, forward Hornsey Road, left Holloway Road, right Liverpool Road, right Islington High Street, forward the Angel, forward St John Street, right Rosebury Avenue, left Farringdon Road, forward Farringdon Street, forward Ludgate Circus, forward New Bridge Street, forward Blackfriars Bridge, forward Blackfriars Road. Appearances are TfL's way of testing whether you should then become a black cab driver. So once you've learned all your routes, you then have to appear at TfL's offices where you get tested orally by examiners. Behind me is uh, Lestra, TfL's buildings. This is where I was coming in when I first started my appearances. And now they've moved the appearances down the road. Um, this is still TfL controls everything else to do with London Transport. This process can be quite nerve wracking to start with. Um, you have to go suited, you have to refer to the examiner as sir or ma'am. Um, after an appearance, uh, there are what you call points collectors. These are people that work for the knowledge schools and they collect the data of the questions asked on that particular day. Uh, they go back to the school and they, um, the schools then print out um, what we call daily sheets. This is a, a way of basically uh, revising. He still scored. Yeah, I, I was looking at it, he said, I just think he's done it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm scoring. Yeah, he's scored me. Yeah. Oh, it just ruined me with, with what's the smallest hotel in London? The smallest? Yeah. What's, what's the smallest the, hotel? The smallest hotel in London. That's the first the, question. No, no, yeah, yeah what, but he was, he began, what's the smallest hotel in London? What's the, what's the, the, the hotel that's got the most rooms in London? <laughs> I would never. Yeah. Is that one of the questions? Yeah. Or the most famous French restaurant on our show. Process isn't as straightforward as it sounds because um, if you fail a level, you go back to the beginning. If you fail it twice, you go back to the very beginning of each step, uh, each level. So um, it's impossible to really tell how long it can take you because you can go forward and backwards very quickly. I studied the knowledge for about three and a half years. Um, I did have a year out, so taking that year out, it took me three and a half years from starting to getting the badge. So it was quite a long time, but we got there in the end, and um, now we're here now. Um, I've been driving a cab for about four months now, so I got out in January. Um, so yeah, so I've just been doing that ever since, really. It's the, the process it is, it is hard, it's, it's a lot to learn and it's a lot to take in 
and it's something which you, you need to be on top of the entire time. Doing the knowledge is something you, you can't just do on a Saturday morning, you need to be on it the whole time because anyone will tell you as soon as you stop, as soon as you stop trying to, or you have a couple of days off or you don't look at things, you, you do forget really quickly. And even, I've only been out four months, the, the, the difference in how I am now compared to what, what, how I was when I first got my badge is remarkable. There's so many things now which I'd look at and go, oh, what was that again, what's that? Because you don't look at it and you don't go down there. I'm called a butter boy. Butter boy means you're someone that's been, um, you've passed out recently and you haven't renewed your license, so that takes three years. So you're a butter boy for three years. So when I renew my taxi license, because we have to renew them and have a new uh, criminal record check every three years, then I'm not a butter boy anymore. It took me three years and 11 months. And I worked at becoming a taxi driver on the knowledge every single day. Uh, the positives, I'll start with the positives. The positives of, positives of being a black cab driver is um, the flexibility, you work whenever you want, and if you want to earn more money, you stay out. Uh, it's a job where I'm completely free to do what I want. No one tells me what to do. No one, I'm, I'm, I'm never have to be late. I don't have to set an alarm if I don't want to. I, I go out when I want, I come home when I want. It's nice to, to not have deadlines in your life. And if you become a cab driver, you haven't got time deadlines. You know, you've got to be, you've got to be there. Unless, you know, it's nice to be able to come to work when you want to come to work, go home when you want to go home. Having said that, you've got to also have the drive to, to be able to do that. It's a brilliant job, you meet lots of different people. Um, I've met some celebrities, I've had, I've had lots of sports people. Now that's fun, it's interesting, it always gives me a story at the dinner table to talk about, which is nice. Um, negatives of it, I would say, is the loneliness of the job. You do sometimes want to see, you know, you're not around people like, well, I worked before. Um, you're, you're with your friends and you're always constantly seeing people that you know and you're having a laugh and you can do that. Here you can't, there's not really anyone about there. Yeah, you can, if you're at a rank or whatever, you can sort of open the window and speak to the cabbie next to you, but again, you don't really know them, they're not your friend. You make so many people, it's such a wonderful job, yeah, it can be really difficult as well. Um, late at the night, taking people home, they to us a drink, uh, can be difficult. Women falling asleep in the back, uh, men falling asleep in the back, you, know, you get to the destination, you've got to try and wake them up, especially if it's warm up. I'm not getting out of my cab. You know, to, you know, man, I'm banging on the window and shouting at him, but woman, how do I wake a woman up that's asleep? Because she's had two or three So, so it, it can be difficult sometimes. You know, it's, it's quite, well, it was voted, I think, on, I think Sky about five or six years ago, done a, a little summary of, uh, of jobs to find out the most stressful and difficult job. And then, oddly enough, a London black taxi driver was the most stressful job. It's about the myth, about the price discrepancy because a lot of times, especially the journeys in town, they're very similar. The prices are similar. People are, there's a myth going around that like black cabs are like nine or ten times more expensive, but they're not. Actually, it's, you know, and, it's, and if you go into the, the person's getting there closer and they're taking a the shorter route. I, um, I knew a, a group of people who um there was a group of boys and a couple of them went, no, we're not taking a black cab, it's too expensive. Half of them got Uber, half of them got black cab, all to the same place. Black cab got there 10 minutes earlier. The Uber driver went down the road that was shut and got lost, didn't know what to do. And it was a tenadera. Black taxi trade, in my experience, and I'm only a, a, a young driver, we've got no issues with competition, but it's got to be fair competition. So there's already a whole bunch of rules set in place that the the mini cab industry, the private hire industry, should abide to. No new rules need to be put in place as far as I'm aware. Um, yet these are getting broken every day on a regular uh, regular basis. The issue with Uber I think really is mainly to do with the fact that TfL are allowing them, if not helping them, to break their own guidelines which doesn't really make sense. Yeah, the black taxi trade we are strictly monitored correctly so you know we're happy to abide by the rules the levels our standard of uh, of, of competence is up here you know and it's safe for everybody it's safe for you it's safe for me and that's how it should be um so the mini cab industry at the moment i'm going through there's, there's a lot of changes going on i understand that but the one particular company that we're probably on the tip of everybody's tongue they're going around the world breaking all the world rules and going uh, you know and, uh, and doing it all wrong and it's just not fair on the people that are doing it trying to do it properly Black taxi drivers and um, knowledge students like myself obviously feel it's unfair because I've currently been studying for five years to be able to drive a black taxi. Um, this has been 
at a lot of expense to myself, both financially and um, emotionally, I'd say. Um, I've had to make a lot of sacrifices. I lose work. I have to take day off each time I have an appearance, for example. Um, I don't take any work on the weekends because that is all designated to um, study and knowledge. And um, also family. Um, I've had to make a lot of sacrifices to my family. I've sent my wife and my children on holiday for the last two years without me. Um, and this is all because I want to be a black taxi driver. During the four years on the, being on the knowledge, my house was burgled. Um, my wife lost her mum and uh, her aunt, uh, uh, sorry, her nan, who I was very close with, and her mum. I lost my mum. This is in the four years of doing the knowledge for you. I can't put into words, without making myself cry, how difficult it was. Uber drivers don't have to undertake any of these. They, they don't have to um, do the medical checks. So you could effectively have someone driving you around that um, has a heart issue. They could have a heart attack at the wheel, carrying passengers. Uh, they could be epileptic. Um, any of these things, because they're not checked. Uh, more alarmingly, I would say, is the CRB checks. Um, Uber drivers aren't criminally checked, or any checks that are carried out are very minimal. Um, it's also been stated that if an Uber driver is an asylum seeker, and they've come from a country that's um, war-torn, for example, they don't need to have any um, CRB checks at all, because it's impossible to then trace um, that person's history. Two, two sexual assaults a week, it's massive. That is massive. And a lot of it gets brushed under the carpet as well. Because, yeah. because yeah, they've got, they got, they got, uh, been connected to the government. Exactly. They're connected to big business, yeah. who own the media outlets and blah, 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 blah. So why are you going to, you're not going to push that iron? One of his stories he put down, he said, uh, so he was dropping off someone in a little intricate part of town, yeah? Or, or picking, no, he was picking someone up. And uh, at the same time, an Uber cab came along, and the back window went down, and the woman in the back said, please, look, can you, really, can you help me? He doesn't know where he's going. I need to get to such and such restaurant. I'm already 20 minutes late. And the woman, and uh, Jason had a woman in the back of his cab, right? And she said, she said to him, she said, do you know where that is? He went, yeah, of course I do. Any good cab driver will know where that is. She said, you should have got a black cab, and they drove off.